If you're a TypeScript user, then for sure you know about Zod, this awesome library that you can use for runtime validation. But now there is a new cool kid in the block and he's here to drink your milkshake. So Archetype is this awesome library that you can use for runtime validation, but it has one big selling point and that is this syntax. The syntax is basically the same as TypeScript, which is a huge difference if you compare it with Zod. So the syntax in Zod can be a bit confusing, especially when you're creating some nested objects or when you're having to deal with undefined or optional fields. And Archetype just took this to a whole new level. Let's check this out. So let's just go ahead and create a type in Archetype. And as you can see, everything is very intuitive. I just have a project here where I have installed Archetype and you can create a new type with the type. And here, let's just say I want to have an object. Let's say this is a user. Let's give it a username. This is going to be of type string. And when you're writing the types, you actually get some suggestions. For example, for S, you get symbol or string. And for N, you cannot just give N, you have to give a number, for example. And if you want to have an array, for example, then you can just add it here to the end, literally just like in TypeScript, which is mind blowing. And let's say, for example, you want to have an optional field, you can do that really easily. You just come to the name and add a question mark, literally just like in TypeScript. And you can do all kind of TypeScript magic that you normally do. Let's change this back to string so that it makes sense. And now let's add another field, let's say an ID, and this can be either a string or a number. And just like that, stuff works out of the box. Now, the cool thing about this library is that it also has some really cool built-in syntax augmentations. Let's say, for example, we want to add an age and this is going to be a number. And let's say that we expect this age to be maximum, I don't know, 120 years. Then you can just add it like this. And there you go. Maybe we want to have an email field. And for that, you can just have string dot. And when you hit dot, you're going to see that there are so many options here. We can have a date, we can have an email, JSON, Semver, and just a bunch of really cool types that you can just use out of the box. So I'm going to use email here. And just like that, it works. Okay, so now that we have our type defined, let's go ahead and give it a name, I'm going to call this user type. And now we can just use it to check if an object actually matches this type. So let's just go ahead and call this as a function. So you can just call this and pass in an object. So let's create an object we want to check, I'm just going to call this object to check. And let's give it a username. This should be username. Yusef, an email. Let's simplify this for a moment. I'm just going to leave the username and the email. And let's say that we don't pass in a real email, but just a string. And now we can call this so object to check. And this is going to return a result. And if you hover over result, you can see that this can be either the object or you get an errors object. And now we can just check if this is an instance of error. So instance of type that errors. Then I'm going to just console that log the result. And this is going to have a lot of different fields, but it has a message field that we can just use right now to check the result. And otherwise, we're just gonna console log success. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So npm run start. And as you can see, this is the error message email must be an email address, but was just Yusuf. And if I just pass in a real email at email.com. Let's run this again. And as you can see, this is success. Now, this was just a small example on how the library actually works. But of course, 
the more important question is to figure out how compatible this library is with the ecosystem. So Zod is mostly used in mainly two places. First one is in form libraries like React hook form. And the second one is in routing, like in Tanstack router. But I have found that actually you can just use this library instead of Zod everywhere. It's compatible. And the reason behind that is that there is a thing called standard schema, which is a common interface for TypeScript validation libraries. So there are a lot of validation libraries that just respect this schema. And what this means is that the types that you have create through the library, just implement this interface. And this is then used in other libraries. And this really made me happy to find that there is this kind of teamwork happening in the community where everything just works with everything. So that's awesome. Now, when it comes to comparing archetype with Zod, the first thing that stands out other than the awesome syntax is the speed of the libraries. Apparently archetype is thousands of times faster than Zod. And I'm really eager to know how they achieved this. Now I have to admit that the setup of archetype has a few more steps in comparison to Zod because you also have to install a plugin in Visual Studio Code to get this beautiful type completion. But I think this setup is worth a lot because the developer experience is just superior. I also found the library really more intuitive for someone who has been working with TypeScript a lot this just feels like an extension of TypeScript. And the last thing that I personally liked about archetype is just how you infer a type from a archetype type. It's just way cleaner than how you do it in Zod. What do you guys think? Would you also switch up to archetype or just continue using Zod? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.